Hello everyone. Uh, in this part of video, I I gonna talk about ablation options for desmoid tumors. Uh, when we look at the treatment options for desmoid tumors, we can see uh, many ablation options. But RF ablation, microwave ablation, and cryoablations are some of these. Uh, we can group them into two categories uh, because RF ablation and microwave ablation uh, give very high temperature to the tissue. Uh, we can easily say that uh, while using uh, RF and microwave ablation, we are burning uh, the tumor, burning the tissue. Uh, on the other hand, in cryoablation, uh, we give uh, very very cool temperature we are freezing uh, the tissue by using cryoablation so uh, we call uh, them cooling system uh, unlike uh, RF or mi microwave uh, ablations uh, in the RF and uh, microwave ablation uh, if we uh, have a tumor we are inserting uh, the ablation needles throughout the skin uh, centrally uh, into tumor and if we run the, the RF ablation or microwave ablation machines we are producing uh, an ablation zone around the tumor uh, and we know that uh, the central part of the ablation zone uh, we achieve very very high uh, temperature uh, such as more than 90 centigrade, centigrade degree uh, but the problem is we don't see uh, uh, exactly the uh, ablation margins uh, and uh, 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 how much degrees we are achieving in the ablation zone, ablation margin, uh, it can cause a problem for, for desmoid tumor. For example, if we produce uh, an ablation zone around the tumor, uh, first of all, we don't see the heat, so uh, we don't know uh, invisible heat area. And if we have a critical structure nearby the tumor, we don't know uh, uh, the critical margin uh, and uh, critical structures. Uh, and if, if we have a critical structures uh, around the tumor, uh, first of all, we don't see a heat area, so we have an invisible heat area. Uh, around the tumor and we don't know also uh, the margin of the invisible heat area so we don't know also uh, can we cause uh, damage to the critical structure for example vessels nerves or organs or uh, they are safe uh, because of marginal uh, problem uh, RF uh, and microwave ablation uh, can cause some uh, adverse uh, reactions uh, for critical structure. Uh, in cryoablation, uh, the system is uh, very different. Uh, of course, uh, the technique uh, are the same uh, like cryo, like uh, microwave and uh, RF ablation. We are using needles also and we are inserting needles into the uh, tumor uh, and uh, we run the cryoablation machines we are producing uh, cryozones, ablation zones around the tumor but uh, in this case the ablation zone will change to ice ball so we are easily seeing uh, ice ball visible so uh, we can see ice easily uh, so uh, we produce visible ice around the tumor uh, yes we know that uh, the central part of the uh, ablation zone uh, temperature is very very low 
uh, below uh, 120 degree under under zero, and we can easily clear. Uh, we can easily see the clear margin of the ablation zone, and we know that the surface uh, of the ice wall is uh, around zero centigrade de degree. So, if we very critical. Uh, very near, uh, very close to critical structure. Uh, for example, if we touch the critical structure uh, with ice ball, we know that uh, surface area of the ice ball is uh, non-little. So we know that although we touch the critical structure uh, with ice ball, uh, we know that we couldn't uh, uh, damage critical structure with uh, zero centigrade degree. So uh, it's very, very safe method and safer than uh, other uh, ablation methods. Uh, if our tumor is uh, bigger, uh, for example, uh, we can uh, insert uh, uh, more than one, maybe two or three needles at the same time. Uh, so we are producing ice ball again uh, around the tumor uh, and we can grow the ice ball by using more needles and uh, we can treat very large tumors by using more than two or three cryoablation needles. When we look at the ablations, uh, I can uh, summarize the information uh, according to ablation uh, methods. Uh, in RF uh, and microwave ablation, we are producing very high temperature, more than 90 uh, centigrade degree. Because of high temperature, uh, our patient, patients feel pain in the ablation zone during the operation so we must give general anesthesia uh, because of this pain so we can we can say that the first group rf and microwave uh, ablation uh, must be under general general anesthesia generally on the other hand in this group uh, we have blurry edges we don't see the visible heat so we don't know the critical structure they are safe or not after RF and microwave ablation uh, patient's comfort is uh, a little bit uh, is not very very good because of uh, burning sensation and uh, because of uh, high temperature uh, RF and microwave ablations are repeatable. We can repeat the procedure more than one in the future. <coughs> when we look at the cryoablation, uh, we have some advantages over uh, RF or microwave ablation. Uh, the techniques are the same, but in, in this part, we are producing very, very low temperature. We give below than 140 centigrade degree under uh, zero. Uh, it's totally painless uh, uh, procedure because we are freezing the tumor uh, and the ice can prevent pain uh, in the patient because of uh, that we are using uh, local anesthesia, not general anesthesia in the cryoablation. Uh, in this cryoablation, we see the ice ball uh, we see the margins of ice wall, we see the uh, uh, surface of the ice wall, uh, so uh, we can uh, say that uh, it's safer than RF and microwave ablation, especially for critical structures uh, around the tumor. It's very, very comfortable procedure because uh, it will be painless, uh, under local anesthesia, so we can say that uh, it's very, very comfortable than RF uh, and microwave ablation. It's also repeatable uh, when we compare to two groups. 
we can say that all ablations uh, are reputable for all kind of dead weight tumors. See you until next time.